Right, uh, would you just like to introduce ourselves? You introduce yourself? Sure, well I'm uh, Paul Wedgwood, I'm the game director on the Brink and I'm the CEO of Splash Okay, right now, uh, we are fairly familiar with Brink, having seen your presentation last year. Yeah. We actually named it as the one to watch and I think having played it myself earlier today, I think we were definitely right in our, uh, um, our you know, putting it forward as that and saying as that. You've been quite pleased with the response from people playing it so far? God, yeah, I mean, it's been incredible. You know, we, um, let's see, we, uh, we first, the first time the public got to play it, we took it over to QuakeCon in Dallas. Mm -hmm. QuakeCon's kind of really dear to our hearts because yep. as a mod-making team, you know, that was my 10th QuakeCon, 10 okay. years. Wow. I missed mean, <laughs> one year, but over the course of 11 years, that's 10 QuakeCons that I've been oh, okay. to. Originally as a clan player, you know, later as a mod maker, back when we first did Wolfenstein Enemy Territory, later for Doom 3's multiplayer maps that we'd worked on, again later for Enemy Territory Quake Wars, and then finally Brink to do the big stage show and everything. And the most incredible thing for us has just been the fact that, firstly, so many people are turning up. You know, last year we just did a lot of stage presentations. We gave out a bunch of t-shirts. There are people turning up wearing the t-shirts from last year, which is cool. And then the other thing is just the length of the queues, you know. Um, here at Eurogamer, the large majority of the stands just walk up and play, but we've just been completely unable to do that because we would end up flooding the stands that are next to us. So we've got queues literally going around the stand and around the back again. With the, uh, the, the game being put into other people's hands, is, is this anything that you've seen from people playing it that was unexpected or, or not? What I wouldn't say unexpected so much. I suppose there is this kind of sense that when you when you first let the, the public at large play a game, the public I think have an expectation that what they're playing is close to the shipping version of the game. The second thing of course is that in a game like Brink where we really encourage and reward team play, the test of that is can strangers just literally roll on up, sit down and start playing together in a coordinated fashion? And we've definitely been seeing that and it's something that we're really pleased about. So we focus on trying to make sure that that they have the support that they need, but ultimately it's down to them. If they choose to play as a team, they're going to make progress with the objectives. And we've seen a surprising number of missions end with security having successfully, you know, blown the gate, yeah. escorted the diffuser robot to the centre, uh, repaired the crane and got it over the rapine, escorted it through that slightly dodgy district uh, to the container, cut into the container, steal the data, get it back to the helicopter, and succeed in doing so despite it being their very first ever well, time. Before there's, a, there's a difference between creating new IP and yeah. creating IP and creating a game in a universe that pre-exists. Yeah. In the games industry, it's called work for hire. Someone right, comes and says, hey, we've got this universe, I don't know, let's say theatrical release, uh, Bob the Builder does Dallas or something, yeah. and, and basically the developer is hired to make that game. Those things quite often have a, like a day-date release as well, so the game must be out on a certain date yeah. to match a movie release or something else. And I think most of the industry and gamers realise that there's usually a problem with the quality of yeah. those games where the release date is the most important component mm -hmm. in that triangular relationship yeah. between the scope of the game, the resources that are making it, and the schedule. The schedule is the only important mm -hmm. thing. We kind of came up under id software and id software always had a very strong policy of when it's done yeah they would only release a game when it was done when they felt it was perfect with brink we have control over all three platforms so we kind of live or die by whether we're able to achieve visual parity and gameplay parity across all three platforms but we do at least know that it's entirely us that's yeah. responsible for whether it's good or not and that that responsibility does lie with us but in the case of Brink, we are creating a completely new universe from scratch. And that isn't just a case of, you know, having to paint a bunch of concept art. Ed Stern, our lead yeah. writer, had to write a 40-year backstory <laughs> for this floating city. So there are different challenges in that. But what made this the right time for you to make that transition from making the other content you were making into going to a brand new IP for yourself? And I think, yourself I think a big way. part of it, certainly around the end of 2007, was that we could see that the PC market was in a, a bit of a decline and that it was going to be a challenge to make the kind of AAA blockbuster games that we wanted to make. I mean, if you think about Brink, just the audio, you know, we've rented quarries with 50 or 60 automatic weapons, 21 microphones and recorded audio we had. You know, we, used, we, we worked with the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra for a week. Oh. We, re we rented uh, Shepperton Sound Studios, not far from here, to do our Foley. You can't do that stuff if your game's only going to sell 500,000 copies. Yeah. Just, it just doesn't work. It's basically ambition-driven, you could say. Your, your ambition to make the best game that you can 
Yeah, Maybe and I think it's, and, and a combination of that and the technology being right, yes. the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 were, we felt, the first console platforms that could give us the kind of low latency, super smooth, multiplayer experience that we felt was needed to make a really good team-based combat yeah. game. Okay. And I can, I can tell you, you know, with absolute certainty that when I play the PS3 900 test kit that's next to my desk that has the same memory processor and everything as a standard retail PS3 test yeah. kit, the game looks exactly the same and plays exactly the same as it does on the PC if I go into the boardroom next to me. Right, right. I want to just nail you down on one little question and one little aspect as well. What's your favourite class and weapon setup to play? Because I was trying to get used to different classes and different weapons. Just as a personal thing, what, what, what do you like playing? I think, well, I, I suppose the, thing, the first thing to, that's a bit different about Brink is we don't tie weapons to classes. Because, you know, I used to run, run, I used to run Clan Earthquake and we won the UK, the first and second years of the UK Team Fortress Leagues. I played Engineer for two years in one Reverend with one Sentry and one Dispenser, <laughs> okay, a sorry. shotgun. You got very used to and that. And used so grenades. Yeah. And I believe that if you're an Engineer, it must be with a shotgun. If you're a Medic, you must have an assault rifle. If you're playing as a, as a stealthy so role, you must be a They have to talk you around into doing it. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. But what, what works really well is this notion that I can pick the combat role I like, yeah. the weapons that I like to use, and uh, a body type that suits my preferred playing style, big guy carrying yeah. big mini gun, skinny guy doing really advanced parkour moves, yeah. and the combination of those three things kind of lead me in a, in a kind of tactical direction in the way that I play. Uh, how are you coping with the, the one player in the single aspect of the game mode when for other people doing that sort of stuff? Well the big difference for us is that we have autonomous AI, mm -hmm. and as a player you have the freedom to go any way you like. Yeah. You never go, you're never kind of on a mine cart going a very specific route. And there's a, the way that it works, you'll have three or four big primary objectives that must be completed by the attacking team for them to ultimately be successful. Yep. But alongside that, you've got half a dozen secondary missions that you can be doing at any given time. And this is dynamically generated. It takes into account your combat role, your location on the battlefield, the status of the objectives, what your teammates are doing, what the enemy is doing, and generates these missions for you on the fly. So even though I'm operative, and my primary mission might be hack open the side route to open a route so we can start outflanking the enemy because the soldiers are having yep. trouble putting a charge in the gate to blow us through, I could bring up my objective wheel and go, well, you know what, I'm going to capture a command post instead. Then I could use parkour to sneak up around the outside and bolt across the front line, skipping all that <laughs> combat, yep. slide into cover, sneak into that big medical sheet yep. poop, and capture a command post that's going to give my entire team a health or power bonus. So, I can play as the guy running and gunning down the middle of the street, yep. or I can pick an objective that suits my style. And that's the thing I love most about it, making that seamless transition from single player to co-op to versus mode while doing what I feel like doing. Uh, uh, well, look, it sounds brilliant. We're, all, we're definitely all looking forward to a sarcastic gamer. Cool. We're looking forward to it for a year. We just need to hurry up and get the game. Well, when can people finally get their hands on it? It's going to be released in spring 2011, yep. and it will be on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. Brilliant. Well, we are definitely, definitely looking forward to it. Cool. We will be there fighting uh, on security or on the opposite side, and definitely uh, fighting our way um, through with you and against you, hopefully, as well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very yeah. much. No problem. Thank you very much.